Uh, a rather special guest, somebody who can give us a bit more of an idea of, of what's happening to Barnet uh, more generally, is uh, Dan Martin, who's joined Jamie Reed at The Hive. Good evening to you, Dan. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you very much. So give us a, 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 an idea of your role at Barnet. Uh, so I'm the commercial manager here, um, which basically means I do lots of things. Ultimately, I'm responsible for bringing money into the club, but you know we're a, a small operation, so it's all hands on deck in multiple areas, and I get my hands very, very dirty. So tonight is match day, <laughs> and I've just come over to see Jamie from uh, the depths of our club shop, which uh, is looking very black and amber tonight with lots of nice merchandise out for all of our supporters to go and buy. Amazing. You are very much a man who is doing everything. There will, there might be you sort of, you know, making sure, you know, that the, everything's sort of clean and tidy and you might occasionally even have a paintbrush out somewhere along the way. Jack of all trades, <laughs> I think they say, don't they? Absolutely. But I'm, I'm going to chat to you tonight um, because of, you know, what, the really exciting news that has come out of Barnet, and this is after what ten years out of the borough, and this this battle that Tony Cleanthos has had as the chairman, long-serving chairman, to try and get the club back into the borough, and he believes now is the time, and he's got the plan to return Barnet to Barnet. So, I mean, give us a, a little idea as to you know the background of this story, because. One, two, one, two. It, they, they had to leave Underhill, the joyous slope of Underhill, and, and they, they ended up moving to the Hive, which I'm guessing wasn't ideal for the club or its fans. Yeah, I mean, uh, the move away from Barnet was way before my time. I've been at the club for nearly five years, so I sort of missed quite a lot of it. But, you know, we're looking forward. I mean, it was always the plan um, from our chairman to get the club back into the borough of Barnet. Um, you know what he's built here at the hive is quite incredible the facilities are amazing he's built um, businesses in and around the site itself to support uh, match day operations the club the budgets um, and you know give supporters a, a really good home for barnet football club ultimately barnet football club needs to be in barnet um, and look the past is the past as i said we we sort of sat down during covid and when he first started telling me that he was thinking about you know getting a, an application in at some point obviously we had a two-year hiatus of from any sort of business um but uh, we we met with um barnet council about you know 18 months ago uh, face to face and started the conversation and when we announced the other day of our intention to put in a, a planning application uh, you know we were just ready to do so and uh, he's he's an unbelievable person you know this is his 30th year as chairman of the football club um, and it's Barnett's 10th season playing at the Hive so you know it was all he he's very much about getting the club back to the borough of Barnet for the future sustainability of the club and you know every step of the way he's looking at making sure that every sort of detail benefits the local community you know the school um, the residents and the traffic all that sort of stuff so you know it, it, it's brilliant to be a part of and listen we're going to go through the process properly um, we've got our planners in WSP who are getting on with things we'll have an update in the next few days to see how they're getting on oh right and, okay um, really, so really and truly it's down to it's down to the council right it's council land so it, it's with them well i have i did put to your chairman that anybody who's ever put in any kind of planning application knows it's not going to be straightforward is it no listen <laughs> even if you wanted to drop the curb at the front of your house yes, you still have to go through I mean, a process yeah. so any council's default position is one that can't show support because it might jeopardize the process for them later on down the line so listen we're all saying what we need to be saying from our perspective as i said we've got our planners who we know have reached out already uh, and hopefully we'll have some updates from them at the end of the month that we can share with our supporters and um yeah it, as i said it really is going to be down to the council uh, if they've got an appetite for it as long as we tick all the boxes correctly and do everything properly and keep everything as it should be then fingers crossed it's something that we can see happen and you know our chairman has committed to pay for everything himself. He's not asking for any money. He's just asking for 
a plot of land to build a uh, new stadium on. So um, it's, it really is win-win for the council. So hopefully, if all the stars align, we can uh, see some progress in the next few weeks. I'm going to ask an obvious question. Why is it important for Barnet to play in Barnet? It's the home. You know, I can understand it from a... I mean, I'm a Barnet supporter now, as well as working at the club. But, you know, I talk to supporters. I, I really understand it. I really feel the, the connection that they have, you know, from walking down the hill, seeing the floodlights coming out of the pub locally to your ground in your borough. The club was there for over 100 years. It's not something that people can easily let go. And it's very, very important to our chairman that he gives supporters the opportunity to get the club back into the borough of Barnet. Thank you very much. I'll leave you to get on with the 75 jobs you've got to do this evening. Um, actually, before I let you go, can Barnet beat Chesterfield tonight? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> as long That's as they, the right as long as, job, as long as job 76 isn't putting a kit on me and no, putting me out there. No, I was going to say, yeah, if somebody gives everything. you some boots to put on, uh, then be Absolutely. warned. Absolutely could be the worst decision Dean Brennan's ever made in his whole career so we'll we'll keep that one I'll, I'll stay in the shop tonight I think thank you very much lovely to speak to you this evening um Thanks, so it